How's it going? It has been a minute since I've been able to sit down and record anything, and so I decided I was going to do exactly that. Just sit down, hit the red button, play something easy and fun, get back into it. So I'm going to check out this medieval remake. So this is a game that I played the hell out of, but only a demo version, which apparently is a pretty common experience with this game. I think it was on like six or eight different demo discs on PS1. Pretty sure I actually may have had it on two different demo discs. Um, I know I had it on like a Pizza Hut one. I think they were called Jam Pack. And then it was also on a uh, Sony Interactive, and I want to say it was on, I think I read that it was on three or four other demo discs, so it seems to be a pretty common experience that people, a lot of people played this game and loved it on demos, but never actually owned it. Uh, I was trying to decide early on if it was a like a straight up one-to-one -one remake. It does not seem so, at least not exactly, uh, because... There's some small things like there was one of these so these are voice acted now whereas they were not in the original uh the controls overall are better tighter a little more user friendly um of course it was a ps1 controller so you would expect that but there was a one of these little tutorial books i can't remember if it was on the left or right here but it had a clever little joke about uh not being able to get into deep water something about like uh swimming not coming naturally to those of a dead disposition some, something like that it was right here and they took that away and moved it into a place i'll show you later in the first level but uh yeah i loved absolutely loved the demo to this game don't know why i never owned it um it's kind of a mystery to me but I want to tell you about my feelings on this first level compared to the original. I've, uh, I've just been super, super busy lately. It's the only reason I haven't uploaded anything. And, uh, and then I had my whole family got sick for like three weeks and I had a brutal sinus infection that I'm still trying to get over. So the last thing I wanted to do was have my nasally voice heard on the YouTubes. To the graveyard. All right, this is it right here. This is this is where all the memories and the nostalgia came back. And then, so all right, here's what I'm gonna do. I I'm I'm gonna do this first little stretch. Which I mean, this game definitely this remake is beautiful. It looks great. It plays great. Like I said, it's um, feels tight. It's got just enough of the wonkiness. Like, the camera's a little wonky. The controls can be a little wonky at times. But it's enough to, like, capture some of that, you know, old school feel. Uh, while still being overall pretty smooth. But there was one huge, huge thought that I had. So let me just run up a little ways. I'll tell you, and then we'll rewind it, and I'll show you the the original in the same little path.
Alright, about right here, I thought, man, I can't believe how scared of this game I was when I was a kid. Like, this is not at all like I remember. This game creeped me out. And it just seems super kiddy and cartoony. And it made me feel really old. And I was thinking, man, which I, I mean, I was young. I was very young. I was, uh, mm, like 10 or so. Maybe not even, but, but somewhere around 10 when I was playing this on, on the, uh, the demo discs. Um, but then I went back and looked at the original game and, uh, I'll show you the same little first run right now on it. And now, I, maybe your opinion will differ, but to me, when I look back, it justified those feelings. I was like, no, that is way creepier. The sound design, I don't know, I don't know if it's a purposeful decision or if it's just a product of like, you know, prettying everything up, but the, the zombies are way, way more creepy to me. The way they move uh, in the old version is far more creepy and the sound design that's like everything is way crunchier and like you know, everything sounds so clean on this new one uh again i don't know if it's like a purposeful decision but it definitely feels like the kind of haunting uh, even like the the ambient noise the the noise in the background of the wind and everything uh, gives the old one oh and then the huge thing is the draw distance so and this this is kind of probably just a product of you know modernization but being able to look outside and see far off it's really dope it's pretty but there's something about like that super foggy um you know closed off feel of the old game that definitely gave it uh, just a much much creepier vibe so overall once I looked back, I uh, I didn't feel so stupid, or I didn't feel so, you know, silly for thinking that because like, I don't remember that. So that's like a that was my initial feels, and I, I wouldn't. I'm not like a lot of the special effects and everything are also like much much you know more colorful to this this power up. It didn't used to like stay blue, it just had a little blue glow around it. When the enemies die, they have that like pink soul, you know, ghost thing. It's a little, it's just a little more kitty, cartoony, I think. Uh, not really a, a criticism, I guess. It's, you know, it's still really cool and this has its own kind of thing as far as the art style, but definitely feel like they, they, uh, whether purposefully or not, lost a little bit of the what genuinely creeped me out as a kid. Like I remember playing this game and feeling like it was. I, I had the same, maybe not quite the same, but I had similar feelings with this game as uh, like the early Silent Hill games. Like it. It was a. Uh, it was not just a good time. I was I was uh, a little nervous, the entire time I was playing it. Oh yeah, check this out. This this little area right here. I'm pretty sure a uh, mob spawns when you hit the ground right here. Yep. All right. From software nerds, tell me what this area right here makes you think of okay let me uh, back up a little bit more so 
you come down some stairs into a graveyard. There's a pit with a wall around it. And a mob spawns when you get right here. Um, maybe it's just me. But this reminded me so much of one of the areas in Dark Souls 3. When you're coming, um, when you're on the way to the Cathedral of the Deep. And in the graveyard you can drop down and run to an area much like this. There's a, I think there's some kind of a curved sword or maybe a, maybe a great sword. I'm not sure, but it's one, it's a, it's a large sword of some type that's back here. Whole mob spawns and then you can um, run up and there's a little like pathway that runs up the hill to get out or you can run straight like this. Super, super similar. I guess it's not that like unique of a area of a game, but uh, check this, check this merchant music out. This is good stuff right here. Excellent. Excellent shot music. Okay, I need to pay attention and get where I'm going. Have I filled the chalice yet? I don't think so. Oh yes I have, yes I have. I need to go grab it and then come this way. I just now realized there was a, a different different animation for jumping jumping attacks that makes really no sense you, you, you do a stab thrust if it's a jumping attack and you typically slash downwards should be quite the opposite it seems alright give me my chalice But yeah, I've been uh been on a hiatus really as far as gaming in general, but definitely with recording for a while now. Uh, I've got uh, lots of ideas that um that I'm wanting to start, want to do. I've got one series in particular that I'm I'm definitely uh stoked about, but I'm not even gonna say what it is because I've learned from my mistakes in the past or just from how I've been in the past that I had, it's hard for me to completely commit to any any playthrough or series just because of my lack of time so I've decided that I'm going to wait until I have like several episodes of something um, ready to go and that way it's kind of I don't know it gives me uh, more motivation and more commitment to uh to finish it basically i just want to prove to myself that i'm actually gonna like go through with a, a full series if i start it before i uh, upload anything so uh, i've got one one thing that i at the moment i'm really excited about that i'm i'm just starting but i'm gonna make myself get you know maybe three four uh episodes at the very least before i start uploading I think it'll also make me feel a little better because there's a there's that unfinished business feeling once I start recording something and all I want to do is like jump back into it and um this is it in the shallow water but don't be tempted to go for a swim buoyancy can be a problem for those of a dead disposition <laughs> So it wasn't voice acted, but that was back at the beginning in the in the first little tutorial area in the beginning in the in the original game, I mean. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes, where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. Ford 
rescue. It's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? <laughs> How I wish I could fight at your side again, sir. But hold I love this game. Take my crossbow. It's got rapid fire. And like I said, there's, a, there's plenty of nostalgia here. Give me my crossbow. Oh, I haven't even used my arm. This is the greatest thing. You gotta get some arm slinging action in when you're playing old Daniel Fortescue. Alright, maybe one more. Maybe one more level. Pretty fabulous villain there. Do you want to know who I really envy in life? That is... People who just seem to, like... Without trying... Just really... Enjoy their job and I guess you could even go further than job and just say life in general but like like kind of the workaholic types that just show up to some mundane job every day but you can tell that to them it's like it, the most important thing in the world they just like genuinely consider it a super important thing that they do I feel like life would be so much easier. I was talking to a friend about this recently. It seems like life would be so much easier if you had that as just like a, a natural characteristic about you. Because I'm quite the opposite. I, uh... Hmm, hang on. Oh yeah. That is just a damn feel good tune right there. That's good stuff. It's hard to feel bad feelings. Oh, I need my uh I need my club and I think it's over there. Yeah, I need clubbage. Going for clubbage first. This is this is actually a little tricky right here. Can block regular boulders, but not flamey boulders. And flamey boulders can do that. They can sneak down the, the side paths. Um, yep, I'm going for it. Give it to me. Yes. Can you fight in like first person mode to a degree like this? Yeah, looks like you can. There's really no uh, advantage at all. It just makes you slower. But you can't, well, and makes your visibility worse. So, Dan Cam? Not great. Not great for the fighting. Great name. Dan Kim is a great name for a camera <laughs> of a character named Dan, but not too useful. What? Get off of me. What did that I hit? What did that I hit? Is this guy really just that beefy? 
Maybe so. It's kind of a fat boy. But dude, I work with people. Like particularly a couple older guys. Like retirement age. Could have could have been retired. One of them d did retire and then just couldn't stand sitting at home and came back to work. And I don't get it, man. I don't get it. It is very hard for me, going back to what I was saying, to like find true um, motivation or what is this little guy? Is that an Easter egg or is that on all of these? I just haven't noticed. Maybe if I can shoot him with a crossbow. Oh, hang on. What do we? What do we got here on the crossbow? We got just normal shot. <laughs> there we got sidearm gangsta sling. That's hilarious. I don't remember that. I don't, I don't know if there's any actual use for that, but I find it funny. Oh yeah. It's a smash. But yeah, I find it. Super, super hard uh, to not just feel like I'm going to work and, you know, basically pretending, pretending to be the role I am every day. And uh, I, so I envy people who just have that natural, like, no matter what I'm doing, it's the most important thing. I envy those people. But even more than that, I envy people that... Um, actually are passionate about what they do and uh it, it's just one of those weird things it's like why why am i on fire what is happening um i'm about to get wrecked when i let's let's go back let's go back to the sword Life bottle used. I'm a chump. Replenished my life bottle. Found the witch talisman. Don't remember what that does at all. Another shield. Give me all the goodies. Man, I died. Not like full died, but died too much. More than I should have. I suck so bad in talking and playing even the easiest games. I remember like thinking this game was very difficult back in the day too, but I don't think I I don't think it was actually difficult. I think it was just that it creeped me out, so it was stressful to play. And so I interpreted that as being difficult. But yeah. I'm uh, super envious of people who actually find something they're passionate about. And it's kind of one of those weird things in life where like, you want to tell your kids and you, like, I guess people told me and you want to believe that like, you know, that, that whole kind of like, there's no, you never have to work a day in your life if you find something you love kind of thing, right? Well, I mean, I, that rings true and I, I think for a lot of people it is but I don't think it is for me and I don't think it ever will I don't think it ever would be or will be or could be because so I don't think there's anything that I love enough to do every day and not like not want to do it literally nothing that's just I just don't think I'm the kind of guy that wants to do the same thing every day and I don't have anything that motivates me enough to think I want to. 
Maybe I just never found. Maybe maybe I'm. Maybe people like me who just show up and do a job in order to like function and. Oh, you! You're supposed to fall in the hole. You know, I basically show up because I want to function normally in society and uh, have enough money to you know. Oh my God! Give me that. The 3D-ness of that little area was kicking my ass right there. I kept thinking I was far enough. Oh. Um, I got another shield so I can, I can block. Get, get, get me up, get me up. We have failed the master. We give our lives. Sometimes it glitches out and like won't let you read books. I've noticed. Oh, I already did that. Don't tell me things I already know. Give me the hills. Um. Yeah, that's it. I can't complete the thoughts that I was having without sucking. So I'll just, I'll just shut up about that. But it's something I've been thinking about. I guess I've always thought about it, but lately it's just been a extra apparent I think in my in my work life I just uh I just wish I had a little bit of that you know wish I had a little bit of that thing where I was like absorbed like selfishly I wish I was a little more selfish and just absorbed into whatever I had going on you know because it seems like a lot of people just like get really absorbed in whatever they're doing and it just to them is genuinely the most important thing in the world and for me I always have this like layer of um, like separation from anything I'm doing where there's like a part of me that's that's experiencing the thing and then there's a part of me that's kind of like observing me experience the thing and Unfortunately, having mostly like negative thoughts about either myself or the uh, thing that I'm doing being pointless or, uh, you know, just not that cool. Just not that cool. I guess other than like parenthood, I don't really have. I mean, that's that just is what it is. And it's like. It's hard not to, uh, you know, not really room for that. I love being a dad. I love my kids. And so that just is what it is. But like all the rest of life, it'd be real cool to just like genuinely think that I was an important person in this world and, uh, and the things that I did mattered. I guess that's all I'm saying. It's, it's, it's actually now that I, have tried to talk about it it's way more of a bummer than I meant for it to be yeah, I, at first I just thought it was a little interesting uh, anecdote that I could go on that I've been thinking about lately but uh, didn't mean for it to be negative all right we got to do one more because I want to fight the first boss all right, I don't know this area as well I don't think this was in the demo but I have, uh, this is as far as I've ever played in the game in any capacity. So, I think I'm just gonna go full game mode. Try to speedrun this. Uh, I guess speedrun's not the right word. I don't know how to speedrun, but try to not suck. Oh, I'm stuck. That was, uh, got that club. What is happening? There we go. Oh, these dudes will steal from you. They'll straight up steal your weapon. Smashing time. Should 
probably not use up my club. It's got a, uh, it's pretty healthy, pretty healthy life meter, but it does have a life meter. All right, which way first? I think this way. Slice them up, slice them up. It's kind of always, almost always better to use the power up. It is fun just slicing. Alright, GTFO time. On to the next. On to the next. Uh, this, this boss that's coming up here is another example of I uh, I wanted to see it I, like I said I never played it in the original oh he got my sword got it back got it back you punk sneaky boys is this the first souls like I ever played just not thinking of that. I made the connection to the, the little area in Dark Souls 3 earlier, but I was just thinking about the um I was just thinking about the uh, what are they called? I don't know, those little thieves. Also in Dark Souls 3. Um like the thing that Grey Rat is. Oh, did you really? Give me. Thank you. Yeah, these are like these are like little gray rats. That would have been a really cool mechanic, actually, in Dark Souls Three, if they made those little those little guys that are in the um. Man, it's been too long since I played Dark Souls Three. All my uh, areas and things are not coming to mind. But, um, if they would have made those guys able to just jack your weapon and take off running, you had to to kill them to uh, to get it back. All right, so I think I need to go back this way first. I'm gonna go into that room. Well, let me make sure I don't. Maybe there's a rune in here too. This is the room I need to go into. Yeah, glad I did that. All right, so I need to get something so that guy can play a new song, I believe. Yeah, I'm calling it right now. Medieval. First souls like. I guess it doesn't have a dodge, nor a lock on. I guess uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time is actually the first souls like now that I think about it. I'm saying all this jokingly. I'm not uh, in that kind of uh, way of everybody compares everything to Dark Souls and justifiably. I mean, in my opinion, it's very high. One of, if not the greatest game ever, and should be, should be used as a standard for everything else. But. Uh, anything else in here to get before I fudge the place up? No, let's do it. Time to win.
Okay, one more pathway. Which is where? Uh, oh, it was, it was in that first room right here. Honestly, just, like, pretty interesting game design. Uh, I mean, I know there's a, there's a the little bit of nostalgia for sure, but I do honestly feel like this is a, a pretty good game that holds up. I feel like the original minus the controls would hold up. It's a fun, linear game, you know. Early 3D, again, kind of clunky, but interesting. Uh, I'll give you another, like, example here. I'll let you watch this, and then I'll show you the, the original. Again, personally, I think the original is much creepier. Yeah, I right, what do I want to go for? Go for the crossbow, yep. So, this is just a, uh, a waiting style boss, you gotta survive until his vulnerable state, then hit him with the uh, long ranged. I was trying to see if there was any difference between the uh, ooh, the uh, the low shot and the gangster sidearm. I couldn't tell. to it. Pretty sweet. Alright, what do I get now? I got three chalices. Oh, hammer time. Ah, Fortescue! What's this I hear about that arch-cat Zarok 
still being alive. Thought. No, I've never actually used this. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to actually play all the way through this game. If nothing else, just so that I can say I did. Um, but, nice little dose of nostalgia, for sure. And, there is a uh, really cool secret to this game if you're willing to do this, which I don't think I'm going to be able to, but if you pretty much 100% this game, it unlocks the entire original game. Um, to be played with the graphical fidelity and I'm I'm assuming the control scheme and everything of the original PS1 and I think that's a very cool little secret uh, as far as you know things to unlock for you know doing everything in a game I feel like that's about as good of a thing as they could have put in this remake it's it's almost makes me want to invest the time to do it but uh don't think, don't think I'll be doing that. Got other plans, other things I'd like to get to, other things I'd like to record. And um, like I said, I know this wasn't wasn't much of a video if you're still around, but I just wanted to get back in the swing of things a little bit and uh, just get behind the mic, get used to it again. It's been like over a month, and I think I've just been procrastinating it um for the last few days since i got over my sickness for the most part and uh just felt weird felt weird because i haven't done it in so long so yeah i appreciate you i'll see you back pretty soon have a good one